All right, everybody, this is Ross, the Fig Boss. Today we are training young fig trees. This is kind of part two. Part one, we just talked about why this is really important, kind of how to do this. We talked about pruning in the fall. We talked about how the apical buds are really critical, especially to preserve them. But what I went around to all these trees that I just recently took out from underneath the sunroom, put them here on the patio to start our fig season off on the spring, I went through one of the first things I did was actually stake a lot of the branches. Because pruning can only do so much. I mean, yeah, you could be perfect to some degree with your pruning, but to make your pruning a bit better and easier and uh, just knowing this in your mind before you go ahead and actually make some cuts that you can come in here and use some stakes, some bamboo stakes, come in here and actually stake some of the branches to get the form that we want. That way the branches are trained in the directions that we want. Here's an example down here of a tree that was kind of growing straight up in the air. Again, it's, this is a very young tree, and what I've done is I've set up stakes, opened this branch out, staked it away from the, the, tr the center of the tree. We're really opening up that center. I also put a stake there, which pushed this branch outward this way. So we're forming that open center right now, where the only thing left to do is we have this main central leader. The only thing left to do is actually attach this to that stake. And then what happens is we have an open center with four scaffolds all in the corners of the pot, the corners of a square, essentially. And now we've just essentially opened up, how many times can I say essentially, but we've opened up the center of the tree. We're maximizing the light that this tree is going to receive. We're setting up the form of this tree to the best of our ability. The same thing has kind of happened over here. We've attached one of the branches here to that stake. And again, right there in the middle. And then again, there, the third stake. Uh, and oh, by the way, here's the fourth one down there. So that's kind of the main framework, getting that main trunk to come up or even multiple trunks to come up. And then forming these four scaffolds that you see that are then away from each other in each individual corners of the of a square, I guess you could put it. Here's a, a tree that has multiple trunks at the base. It doesn't matter how you do this. You could do multiple trunks. You could do one single trunk. You could even do a central leader. You know, I cut out the central leader or I actually open it up by doing some staking, as we just mentioned. Now, there are some trees I just took out of the greenhouse. Um, I did a lot of that staking that we just looked at yesterday. Uh, and then today I took these out and started a lot with my staking because the staking, the form of the trees really wasn't perfect, especially coming out of here. It was extremely crowded. Um, you know, things didn't get as enough light as I wanted to. We also had some low, if you guys recall a few videos ago, we talked about how that really cold temperature actually burned some of the new growth in the greenhouse. The heater did not kick on. So the form has been a bit busted and, and things didn't grow the way that I wanted them to. They never do in the greenhouse because everything's so compact in there. I have no choice. I have no option but to kind of just let everything grow the way that it grows. I wish I could come in here maybe and thin, or maybe even pinch or select some of the new branches that I want. But really the best scenario I think is kind of just let the trees grow how they'll grow and then do some staking. So here's actually a, a nice Smith tree that I turned into something that actually has a decent form. Whereas you can see, we have multiple trunks from the base. There's three scaffolds basically coming out there. And then from there is a many different fruiting branches at different lengths, different heights. And the goal was to basically set this tree up so that we're maximizing the amount of light. And again, let me try to get a decent view here for you guys. Having an open center, maximizing the light by bending the branches with the stakes so that all this stuff is away from each other. And then everything has its own quadrant to set up these fruiting branches in for the future. You know, here's some really nice fruiting branches and all this is pretty much for the most part fruiting on every single node. But if everything was really close together and we had less light, well, we'd see less fruit. And the more surface area that we can achieve by opening this up, 
the more we can maximize the light, right? Imagine if my tree is just straight up in the air like this. Well, we're gonna have less fruit because if my tree was out like this, we would see more fruit, right? Am I getting more light like this or am I getting more light like this? So think about it. You know, we're trying to open this up. It's really just that simple. And I'm going around to every single tree. None of them are really that perfect. Other than maybe this one here, this Smith and another Smith I have. They really just, uh, they do really well with their form. As you can see, this one here looks pretty darn good. Um, where the branching here starts, again, we have the main trunk multiple scaffolds from these scaffolds we then have three fruiting branches from this scaffold i have two down here multiples up here again here's more of these three permanent branches from last year and then from those permanent branches the fruiting wood from last year we then have now all these nice smaller more numerous fruiting branches that will continue to grow throughout this season i mean we still have about three solid three to four weeks of growth at least that I will encourage them to grow in the next three to four weeks. And this is really good for this tree. It's just fruits on every single node on the Smith. And the, basically the more fruiting branches we have given enough light, given enough sunlight, we will have the most amount of fruits. So as an example, I have one, I mean, I could count necessarily, I guess I could count but I really wanna show you just how many fruits are on this tree. We have about four or five there, about 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, maybe 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, uh, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So we've got roughly about just 30 on this section of the tree, and this section is much more vigorous. And by the way, there's even some Braba on here, which may not ripen, but there's five Smith Braba here. Probably won't ripen, to be honest. But we have probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 to 70 fruits just on this one tree. And that's you know only what I'm seeing so far. This is a three or four year old tree. Um, this is, I think, this is its fourth season. So, um, this is what you can expect, but the only way you can achieve this is if you set the tree up from the beginning, because you're never going to get this without, without doing that. Um, there are people, and I, I know um, this is a, a way of doing this, where you, you kind of get the framework set up, and then we do hard cuts every year. For me, I kind of like to leave this alone with my own circumstances and having less light. You know, you kind of pollard the tree every year. Whereas maybe if I come back to these three main scaffolds I have, well, instead of letting them kind of grow from there, I cut off the tree and then it starts to branch out. And then once I get the branching that I want, then I make more hard cuts every year. And it kind of does the same thing. I mean, it's just the debate of really whether or not you want to leave the apical bud uh, or not. And I've talked about in detail, the apical bud, if you, if you keep that, you typically get earlier fruits, more fruits, um, and higher quality fruits. So I would rather for me, and, and that's just for my climate. Now, maybe somebody else where they live, that doesn't necessarily apply all those three things that I mentioned. Um, and instead, removing the apical bud will remove the dominance and instead allow the tree to branch out and maybe even encourage the tree to grow as we remove the, the apical dominance, we're removing those hormones and we're allowing the tree, we actually are telling the tree, hey, do some growing and, and a little bit less fruiting. But given enough sunlight, and which I don't typically have, uh, you will see good results with that method. You will see good results by removing the apical buds or even a significant amount of the growth. I don't necessarily recommend removing a, a significant amount, doing a hard prune, which is maybe six to eight inches of growth, removing that from your tree. But some people have success with that. You know, it really does depend on where you live and your circumstances. So uh, for me, I think this is the way to go of, you know, setting this whole thing up. And of course, then allowing myself to get many, many fruits. Here's another example of a tree that we kind of already have in such a great form. This is my oldest Smith. 
and you can see like here's the the middle of the tree right we have about four or five scaffolds actually which cover the entire surface area that is possible for this tree to achieve let me turn this around maybe and you can see this a bit better i mean it really is as good as it gets and there you can see the bare bones a bit better uh, let me zoom in a bit for you guys but you can see here's many of the branches coming up from the structure that we created and then from this main structure that is permanent we then have many fruiting branches and fruits that have formed and even here along this growth as we've opened this up, we've had a lot of these smaller fruiting branches here that have formed, and even those are gonna put out fruit. You know, you don't necessarily need to have a branch that's 12 to two or three feet in length. You know what I mean? Like, you don't need a, a branch that's super long or super vigorous. We just need it to get the sunlight that it needs. And again, I think there's just different approaches. It's uh, really up to you but this is a lot of fruit in a very small density which is I think hard to achieve um, if you don't keep some of those apical buds um, and don't do that hard prune every year um, but you know each his own again there's different ways to do this but that's uh, that's the video here guys we do this to all the trees training them setting their life up like this whether or not I just took them out of the uh, the sunroom or I took them out of the greenhouse every tree is getting a very similar treatment thanks for watching this one guys we'll see you we'll see you soon I'll catch you guys for the next one take care